What is a nation? Is it just a border? Is it just a flag? Is it just a geographical piece of land which can be fought over in a suicidal ethnic or religious tug of war? Or is a nation something based on a much higher idea, made up of creative human beings sharing a common language culture? Take a look around you. How many nations based on this principle do you see today? Now zoom in on the situation in the Middle East, and in Israel in particular, where it is the lack of this concept which is characterizing the conflict in the region. We have recently emerged from a century in European civilization whose characteristic has been that of growing philosophical mediocrity, low-life pragmatism, and single-issueism, which is typified today by the willful inability of leading nations to take action in averting the self-destruction of the Middle East and bringing about a true peace in that region, a peace which must recognize what it takes to build a nation. Treaties, programs, and doctrines will not provide a durable basis for a Middle East peace. Such attempts have failed all too often. Rather, the true conception of a nation is that it is made up not of borders, boundaries, deserts, rivers, or even of beasts, but that a nation is made up of creative human beings. Any lasting peace in Israel and the rest of the Middle East depends on these implications. Impossible, you ask? Take a look back at the forgotten story of the German Jew Moses Mendelssohn, the true legacy of the Jewish people. In the late 18th century, the Jewish population was treated not unlike the African-American slave population in the United States. They were denied the right to education, they were not allowed or trusted to become professionals, they were denied citizen status, they were forced to live in ghettos, and they were frequently the first ones blamed for any problems or wrongdoings in society. It was in this climate that Mendelssohn launched a renaissance of culture, science, and art throughout Germany. Mendelssohn viewed human reason and the powers of his own sovereign mind as primary to any religious denomination and the sole basis for any conception of a true nation. In order to consolidate a German nation, Mendelssohn attempted to bring the Jewish people and the Germans into the best of German classical culture. He organized Frederick the Great to change the language of the court from French to German, and along with Gotthold Lessing, developed the German language to integrate Jews and Germans alike and allow them to express ideas on a much more profound level. The most important thing Mendelssohn did was to defend the legacy of Wilhelm Leibniz in Europe, which had come under increasing attack following his death, and to advance Leibniz's works through his Phaedon and other publications. It was Leibniz who broke from the oligarchical tradition a generation before and worked to set up sovereign nations throughout the world. He asserted that the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness must form the basis of any republican government. This philosophy was later adopted with the creation of the United States of America. Similarly, Leibniz organized Peter the Great to set up the Russian Academy of Sciences to lead the physical and scientific development of Russia. In Europe, a fight broke out with Montpertuis, Euler, Voltaire, and Algorati of the Berlin Academy of Sciences deployed to wipe out Leibniz's legacy and destroy the credibility of that academy. Rather than directly confronting Leibniz's philosophy, they set up a series of essay contests with the prize given to those essays that attacked Leibniz. They believed that the only thing human beings could know was what could be perceived by sensual experience, and that human reason did not exist, and similarly that the human mind was unable to comprehend and to know God. Mendelssohn, along with his collaborator Lessing, a student of the great Leibnizian follower Abraham Kessner, fought against this tendency, satirizing the attempts to diminish Leibniz's philosophy. In 1763, Mendelssohn entered his essay, Whether Metaphysical Truths Are Susceptible of the Same Evidence as Mathematical Truths, and won first prize defending Leibniz in an essay contest which was designed to crush him. Mendelssohn held that human creative reason, not sensual perception and not mystical experience, must be the leading principle for the morality of all human beings. The idea that man was not a subject and not a slave, but was a reasonable being, became the crux around which the German nation and all other nations from that time on were based. The Jewish people led a revolution in classical art and science, and with the consolidation of the German nation in 1871, formed the basis of Germany's humanist movement. 
Within a quarter century, Germany surpassed all other nations in Europe as an industrial and productive giant and set up plans for a network of railway systems crisscrossing the Eurasian continent, eventually connecting Berlin with China and Russia. By the turn of the century, through the continued influence of Mendelssohn, the German culture assimilated this Leibnizian American system policy, spreading it to the rest of the continent. On the other side, against this tradition was the British Empire, holding fast to the idea that man was a mere beast who could and must be controlled. The British Empire was threatened by the very existence of Germany as a sovereign nation and set out to destroy it and break the Mendelssohn tradition. With the ousting of the German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck, who had held together alliances with Russia and Prussia, World War I and World War II were set into motion. Following World War I, the brutal conditions of the Versailles Treaty destroyed the economy of the already weakened nation. Its physical wealth, including its raw materials and the industrial base, were looted. Its culture was broken and driven into existentialism, and with this environment of induced chaos, Hitler was brought into power. Following the destruction of the Holocaust, the Jewish population was beaten down. The tragedy is that rather than continuing to fight for the soul of Germany, buried in the tradition of Moses Mendelssohn, the Jews, manipulated by the British, cast off their ties to Germany. Following World War II, the Jews went to Israel, renouncing their role in the development of Germany. They renounced the very best of what they had accomplished. Without this aspect of its culture, Germany was destroyed and the Jewish people sunk down into a state of victimization. The very best of the German Mendelssohn tradition, which called for a peace between cultures and religions based on what was common to all human beings, slowly faded away and the Jews in Israel began to treat the Palestinian people in the same way that they had been treated hundreds of years before. No longer were they fighting for a nation based on the highest conception of mankind. Rather, they allowed themselves to be manipulated into tribal conflict upon base terms of ethnic and religious differences. Look at Germany now. Look at what the Israeli leadership is doing in the Middle East. Where is Moses Mendelssohn today?